Alan Bragwell here again with more of my series on recovering from COVID. I'm going to call this one Recovering from COVID Part 2. And I have uh, invited and they have graciously agreed to join me, uh, Clint and Elizabeth Knowles. And Clint and Elizabeth I've known for uh, a number of years and we uh, unfortunately got acquainted through the tornado that hit in uh, 2011 in their town, which I was going and have been going to uh, working with a local doctor there. But out of just that recovery effort, that's how we got better acquainted. And currently they're serving in the uh, Church of God of Prophecy. Clint's the regional overseer for Ohio and West Virginia and uh, couldn't work very well without Elizabeth, his administrative secretary. And uh, she does a lot of stuff, I'm sure. And um, as well, um, does, and, and Elizabeth is a counselor too. Uh, and so I'm sure she's doing some of that. But thanks for, thanks for joining me this afternoon as we're recording this. And um, I just wanted to get your take on your journey, the, your experience with COVID personally, and just what surprised you in your experience and y'all can go first whoever wants to go first and second well first of all thank you alan for even inviting us to share um this is a very needed subject to talk about and so we just thank you so much for inviting us to share a little bit of our story and and how we made it through uh, the sickness but uh being a gentleman i'm gonna let my wife go first <laughs> Um, it is good to be here, and, and we want to say thank you to you after we did a lot of work in the community where we lived in Alabama and how we met you. You also helped us um, recover some from some personal PTSD that we were dealing with, and we appreciate all that you do um, oh, thank you. Glad in your field of labor. You've helped so many folks, and we appreciate that. So, um, yeah, we're excited to share about our, you know, um, just to maybe give hope, you know, to others. And, and I think we're all a little kind of, you know, you, you have two different schools of thought. You have some people that really believe this is a virus and some people that don't, you know. And I think the most um, surprising part about going through the journey of, um, you know, experiencing the sickness for me was um, just you know, the way it just made you feel emotionally and physically really uh, drug us down for several days. Yeah. So I have to be honest with you, Alan, and say that, you know, I have really kind of changed through this whole um the the whole pandemic we've been through. Uh, for example, I think probably the first couple of weeks, I was one of those people who thought it was a hoax until a couple of my pastors in the region caught the virus and almost passed away. Wow. And then I began to see it impact friends and family and I've taken a totally different approach. And then when we, when we did all the protocols we knew to do, we wore the mask, um, we were very cautious, washing our hands, doing the social distancing and we still caught the virus. I, I'm gonna say to you probably the most um surprising aspect that we that I went through was the loss of taste and smell that really set me back because you know I'm, I'm a young 50 year old but I begin to think about elderly people they lose their taste and smell how do they know if their kitchen's on fire how do they know if there's a gas leak and so this really I mean I become a person that really would take time when someone said hey I have COVID, I would ask, have you lost taste and smell? And if they said yes, I, would, I was like, do you have a gas stove? I, I do. Please double check and make sure you turn. I just went through those different protocols because the fever and the achiness, it really didn't bother us as much as the loss of taste and smell. Um, can you add anything to that, Elizabeth, about the, did you have something similar to that too? Oh yeah, I lost taste and smell. In fact, my smell still has not fully recovered, but my taste has. And so this was the beginning of October mm -hmm. that we experienced the virus for probably about seven days. And, you know, speaking of theories on, I mean, it, it, we believe it's real now. I believe that 
you know, um, it could have been biological. It has affected so many people, you know, in such a short amount of time. And I won't get off on all those, you know, <laughs> type of subjects, but the, the sickness itself was just very odd. It was just a very odd, you know, progression of symptoms. Yeah. And we, you know, we're empty nest. So <laughs> we're here by ourselves. We take care of each other and we just, you know, we banner back. There's no interruptions. We have, you know, we can just talk about the whole process and that whole like seven to nine days, we commented on every, you know, every symptom, everything we mm. felt, everything that we were going through. Yeah. But now I will tell you, I've read, you know, a few articles um, and this one young lady, she's a Christian leader in, in the Christian world. And, you know, she talked a lot about how um, there was a bad headache and it made her feel very almost really down and depressed. And, and I experienced some, I read after we went through the virus. I read that article after and I was like, oh my gosh, that's what I experienced. I mean, I was just like 24 hours, just could not function. Yeah. It was, it was a rough. It, it, rough it probably day. was the buildup of all the fear. It, it's something that was so new. You didn't know the next thing to expect. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you know, it wasn't like having a common cold or sinu strep throat, th strep throat mm -hmm. sinuitis or, or even flu influenza. You, you just didn't know what was next. So you kind of like, okay, what am I supposed to be looking for? It was the unknown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which sets up a really not good mulligan stew of unknown fear. What if, and, and I'd forgot about y'all's uh, empty nest thing. So it's just y'all together. So how did the Lord intervene individually or, or y'all as a couple? What are some things that y'all can share that were helpful through this? From, okay. from I, I'm going to go first on this one. And, and I'm just going to say we're, we're, we're strong people of faith. And now, Alan, you know that your, your viewers and your listeners don't know us like you know us, but you know we are. You know where we used to pastor. We've always been people of very strong faith. And so we do an awful lot of praying uh, and we do a lot of fellowship with the Lord. And so one thing that we did is, is we put on praise and worship music. Mm -hmm. It filled our atmosphere. It helped create a mindset inside of us where it was more hope than it was gloom. And so that was comfort to us. And then, of course, you know, we had a lot of downtime. You know, when you're ice quarantined for 14 days, you want to do what the, you, what the guidelines you need to live through. There's an awful lot of reading. So we found hope in, in encouraging devotions and the word of God. And I, I, want, to, I want to just read you my favorite scripture. Please. It has been mine since a, since a young man, but I, 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 I said it a lot to myself during this time. Be strong and, and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'd hate to follow that, uh, Elizabeth. <laughs> That's pretty good stuff. Well, and it, I mean, it is true. We, we played a lot of worship. We, you know, I kept thinking about through our time that seven to nine days and that was October and so you know back in the early days of the pandemic and we live in Ohio so the shutdowns and the lockdowns were pretty early for us living you know here above Tennessee <laughs> above the Mason Dixon line and so yeah. You know, um, so we experienced the dark days of everything being closed. You only had grocery stores, you know, and I kept thinking during that week because, you know, I'm a counselor. So I think, you know, what are people facing emotionally and, you know, how I felt physically was impairing my emotions. And I kept thinking, wow, and I commented this to Clint, you know, what if you were going through this during the total shutdown? You know, because when we emerged after the nine days, we could go, you know, to the grocery store. We have a really large uh, 
kind of a combo grocery store. It's got other things in it here. And we would walk, do laps just in our recovery, you know, um, and just, you know, we could go to a restaurant again. We started to wear masks, but you know, what if I was one of the ones that got the virus early on, you know, and there was nothing, everything was just so different, but the scripture that I reflected on and used a lot was Romans 5, and that is, therefore, Romans 5, uh, verse 1 through 5, um, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And if he has been given to us to help us hold our hand through this time, we both just kept praying healing over each other and hope and you know, the Lord helped us along with a lot of water, <laughs> a lot of vitamins, oh, yeah. a lot of, you know, we're health coaches too. So a lot of keeping our diet really, really clean. And, you know, it was just the grace of the Lord. I did some pulpit fill uh, not long ago, and I hadn't even talked to y'all about this off camera, but I, I woke up a morning uh, ahead of that. And the word I had was hope. And I thought, okay, everybody's, you know, there's, messages boo coodles of messages on faith and love but i got to thinking i can't i couldn't remember maybe one time i'd ever heard a message on hope and i really enjoyed it and enjoyed and i saw your greek new testament in a picture she posted i i got my greek new testament out and i was digging around I, it was like a, a new dimension i just mm -hmm. i was kind of lord i'm sorry i hadn't explored hope and when you read that in romans again i'm thinking you know, that transcends a lot of stuff, not only recovering from COVID, but other things right now. There needs to be a confidence, an expectation of confidence is one of those things that I got out of that. And I wanted to confirm something else too. Uh, I had spoken when this first started with Andrew Brunson uh, with, uh, right after COVID started and because he had spent a, about a year in almost solitary. And I asked him, I said, I know there's not a good direct con connection to this, uh, but with the lockdown started, what, how did you get through that? And one of the things he talked about was music. In fact, he would sing, he sang so much. He said uh, that one of the guards went and got him a guitar. And this was a Muslim guard <laughs> that brought him a guitar so that he could, because it was helping him do better, even in that situation. So yes, music, reading, these scriptures are so good. Uh, we could talk forever. Um, I wanted to pick on y'all's experience situation not necessarily experience also but your current situation as leaders in 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 your church uh setting and y'all are seeing it because y'all pastor pastors y'all minister to ministers and and other people of course too but uh what could you say today to uh some ministers pastors uh leaders that are tuning in listening in what would you uh if you if you could do that off uh off the cuff there a little bit what would you say to them well, Alan, this is this is one of my favorite subjects to talk about because I was a a lead pastor um, for almost almost thirty years, and so now I do pastor pastors, um, which is a little different when you pastor leadership versus pastoring um, laity on a weekly basis. <clears throat> and so I have been on the other end of the phone calls when leaders have called me. One that's going through my mind right now is one of our ministers on the ambulance bed, about to be put in the back of an ambulance to be taken to the ER, he, he, him saying, get my bishop on the phone. Wow. I need, to, I need him praying for me before I go to the hospital. That was one, maybe uh, hearing, listening to a pastor cry on the other end of the phone going, I have five people in the hospital right now and I can't go visit them. I know. Oh. That, that, that for pastors who care for their people and couldn't go sit with them and give them, you know, some encouragement, it really hurt. 
here's what I would say to them. I would always say 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we live by faith and not by sight. You must understand that the same spirit of God that's with you is with them right now. Don't give up hope. I can't tell you how many times I have said to somebody, I didn't try to fix them. I, I didn't try to tell them what they should be doing. I would only say, don't give up hope. Amen. The Lord's listening to us. The Lord knows all about this. And so it was just encouragement. Let pastors, the ones, those of you that are watching right now, you're, you're, you're viewing this, please give your people hope and stay out of the woods with, conspiracy theories and your opinions about this virus just minister to hurting people because suicides on the rise divorces on the rise illegal and prescription addiction is on the rise and it's because they people don't know how to deal with this we how must to, give them hope how to cope yeah exactly um, yeah so I'm thinking right now, you know, Clint and I take pastoring very serious. And so moving into this role, you know, almost four years ago now, um, we, like you said, pastor pastors. And I, I have such a passion for women who feel called. I have grouped all of our, we have several uh, female pastors that lead, they're lead pastors in their church. Right. So I have them in a little small group that we stay in touch with each other as well as our pastor's wives. We have one lead lady right now. Um, she, she is actually an RN and she is battling COVID. And I've just been kind of just keeping this, you know, constant, we're praying for you, you know, stay hydrated. We love you. I mean, she's an RN. She knows what she needs to do, but I'm such a mommy at heart. You know, I'm just always <laughs> reminding people that, but I think um, I remember the our very first situation with a, a lead lady pastor and her husband both. They were our first case in under our care of our pastors. Oh. And they both were being taken to the hospital. And that feeling of helplessness, because we we go to hospitals to visit. We visit our people. We, we I mean, he has driven four hours you know, to go visit someone in a hospital two states over who was our pastor having a surgery. And that's just what you do when you're in this role. And just that feeling of, and this was during the major part of the lockdown. I mean, he was so frustrated. We could not go to them. Uh -huh. And so like he's and physically touched them. And like he said, you know, it's just them hearing your voice. So the only way we had to communicate with them was through Facebook Messenger. And we would send voice messages because she she and he both were going to be, you know, put on the ventilator. You know, there was no way that, you know, they would be able to text back and forth. It was just a helpless situation. So we did that a few times and we all rejoiced when they were released from the hospital doing very well. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to say to that, you know, caring for those, um, it, it is about the hope and it is about the speaking positive. And I just want to say that if you're in a situation with, you know, someone that is close to you, a friend or a family member who contracts this virus, you know, um, either you're listening right now or in the future, you know, someone, we hope they don't, but someone does, and you're talking with them always speak from a place of hope and positivity because they're the statistics of people overcoming covid are are huge and it doesn't always mean you know a death you know it right. has to follow and we understand we understand that our elderly are you know the weak you know we we don't want them to get that we understand folks are immune compromised we try to keep them sheltered those that are dealing with health issues um, all that comes into play, but still, as friends and family, we just need to keep being that source of hope, especially ministers, even mm -hmm. though we may be facing some hard challenges. I know at one time he was getting all kinds of, call, you know, there was so much going on. You just have to keep your mind focused, but yeah. always distributing that hope. Definitely, definitely. This is just so hard to end, but we got to, and I, uh, Brother Clint, would you would you just lead a prayer just to kind of pull all this together, just as the Lord leads you, and and 
and we just invite folks that are watching this to join us too. Sure, I'd be, I'd be um, happy to. Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord, you know my heart and you know the person of faith that I am. You have made me to be a son like that. I ask, first of all, for your help and your strength. Yes. We ask you, Lord, to rid this virus from not only our nation, but the world. Yes, Lord. We ask you to do that. We also ask you in the meantime, Lord, that whatever we, whatever our profession is, counseling, ministry, Lord, even a blue collar worker, whatever we may be, we're still a neighbor. May we always take care of our neighbors. May we help. May we come to one another's rescue or to one another's side to lend a helping hand. Father, during this time of uncertainty, Please, please deposit hope into us. Let us know that there is, we may be climbing a mountain, but when we get to the peak, there is a horizon for us to view. Yes. We put our trust in you. We put our hope in you. May we somehow, through words of encouragement and your love, offer that hope to those that are around us. We thank you for hearing our prayers. And we thank you for answering those prayers. And we thank you for compassionate people like Alan Bragwell. Yes. Keep your hand upon him, God, and keep using him during this time. And we give you thanks in Jesus name. Amen. 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 You're going to make me tear up now. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the whole idea for us is to have maximum impact. And I'm, I'm just thankful and appreciative for y'all to join me today and do that. I think we're going to get some good responses from this. And I just thank you again for joining me. And we're going to, of course, stay in touch. And um, so God bless you. And uh, I'm going to end the, the recording right now. And again, thanks for those of you that are joining us and whether listening or watching the video. And continue to come back to because we're going to have more interviews of fo real folks going through real situations uh, with real answers. And I appreciate you joining us. Thank you.